Therefore, it is time for member statements. The member from Elgin Middlesex Lynn. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, March is Pharmacist Awareness Month, the perfect time to celebrate pharmacists' expertise and the important role they play in delivering quality care to their patients. This year, the Ontario Pharmacists Association is encouraging everyone to know your pharmacist. Pharmacists are the most accessible, accessible of all health care providers, with many pharmacies being open 24 hours, and pharmacists can offer, offer and provide services and consultations without the need of an appointment. Pharmacists offer more than pills. Many provide services such as chronic disease management and obtain certifications in either diabetes education or respiratory education. Others obtain cert certifications in mental health, cardiology, or geriatric care. Did you know that you can get a travel vaccination from your pharmacist? As of 2016, Ontario pharmacists can give over 10 types of vaccines to their patients. Pharmacists support rural communities across the province. Pharmacists support people struggling with mental illness. Pharmacists support people with, pa with cancer. Pharmacists support family business. And pharmacists support people struggling with drug addiction. However, we mustn't forget the dedicated pharmacy team who work in hospital settings. Hospital pharmacy teams provide care that respects patient preferences, needs, and values. The hospital-based pharmacy team partners with patients to ensure they have medication information that is based on the best quality evidence to achieve their health care goals. During Pharmacy Awareness Month, get to know your local pharmacist and explore everything pharmacy practice has to offer. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Essex. Thank you very much, Speaker. Uh, it's an honour to rise today to acknowledge some of the great things that happened in my riding. Today is no different. Uh, this time, the honour goes to uh, the folks at the Assisted Living Southwestern Ontario organization. I want to give a shout out to Lynn Calder, uh, who is the executive director there. Speaker, specifically, the project is called We Are Able, and uh, it was delivered by some good friends of mine, namely Kevin McShan. Big shout out to Kevin McShan and uh, Chris Lemieux and Rebecca Lefebvre, who developed a program that reached out to employers in my region and informed them about the benefits of hiring people with disabilities in their workplaces, therefore diversifying their own workplaces. Speaker, I don't know if you know, but uh, in the very near future, 40 per cent of Ontarians will have some form of physical disability, and it only makes sense for those prospective employers to be reflective of the society and the, the customers, so to speak, that we serve. So not only does it make good economic sense, it makes good social sense, and uh, uh, you know these, these folks uh, are ready, willing, and able uh, to work. So this program is wonderful. Uh, over the last 13 months, the project made over 30 presentations and uh, connected with hundreds of potential employees that resulted, Speaker, in 20 direct hires from their initiative. So I want to give a shout out. Also, we had a volunteer and appreciation dinner through also last week where they recognized people who have employed folks through this program. Uh, our colleagues from uh, Windsor West, Lisa Gretzky is among one of the recipients of being acknowledged, as well as Brian Massey, uh, Cheryl Hardcastle, uh, and uh, Mr. Maid and the John McGivney Center are all taking part and they're making a difference in our community. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you. For the member statements, member from Kingston and the Islands. Mr. Speaker, last Friday I was absolutely thrilled to join Tom and Chavi on their regular weekly route delivering meals to seniors for Meals on Wheels, which is run by the VON of Greater Kingston. As you may know, Mr. Speaker, this month is March for Meals campaign, which highlights the incredible work done by 9,000 volunteers across Canada and 40,000 meals in Kingston alone per year. These amazing teams not only offer a meal, they also provide reassurance, routine, and companionship, and they will report any issues to the VON if there is something amiss. Mr. Speaker, it takes a special team of compassionate and highly competent individuals to provide this intuitive approach to care in our communities, something that I know firsthand the VON is a master of. The Meals for Wheels campaign is such an excellent program to provide this watchful eye. This year is the 120th anniversary of VON, which is Canada's only not-for-profit charitable home and community care organization. I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to Karen Lowry, the Meals on Wheels coordinator in Kingston, and her dedicated network of volunteers that fan out across our community every single day. Mr. Speaker, Winston Churchill once said that you make a living by what you get, and you make a life by what you give. 
I salute every one of the Toms and Chavis out there volunteering for Meals for Wheels campaign. Together, we can help seniors in our communities live more happy, healthy, and independent lives. Thank you. Thank you. Is that the footnote? Meals on Wheels was started in Brantford, Ontario. Further member speak, the member from Kitchener Constable. Yes, well, thank you, Speaker. I always look forward to the opportunity to invite members and those across <coughs> Ontario down to Elmira for a syrup infused <laughs> celebration as we join in the Guinness recognized Elmira Maple Syrup Festival. That's right, Speaker. It may be April Fools on the counter, but there's no fooling the people <coughs> of Waterloo Region. April 1st is syrup time, and trees have been tapped, and organizers and more than 2,000 volunteers are preparing the site where my team will join with those across the region to serve the best pancakes in Ontario, of course topped off with a heaping dose of Elmira's legendary maple syrup. I also want to give my colleagues from the region fair warning that this year my teammates on the Joey Bats-inspired batter flippers are back to claim our <laughs> prize, victory and syrupy sweet bragging rights in the annual pancake flipping contest. Well, we're flipping batter and serving up pancakes, Speaker. Visitors will have a chance to take in a full slate of the best that Elmira's Cherished Festival has to offer. From a visit to Old McDonald's Farm, to live music, pony rides, and of course, the mobile sugar shack, there's something for everyone. And then there's the once a year chance to meet with Flapjack himself. Speaker, this is an opportunity that's not to be missed. So come on down to Waterloo Region and bring your sweet tooth with you as we celebrate the 53rd annual Elmira Maple Syrup Festival and sweet victory for the battle flippers. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements the member from London West. Uh, thank you, Speaker. It is my great honour to rise today to recognize the amazing work that is being done in my community to advance anti-racism, human rights and, and equity. On Sunday, March 26, the Ontario NDP celebrated the 20th anniversary of the prestigious J.S. Woodsworth Awards, and four of the finalists, including one of the winners, came from London, nominated by me and my colleague, the MPP for London Fanshawe. Sunday Adjak is an accomplished young man and inspiring speaker who moved with his family from Sudan 18 years ago to escape civil war. In 2000, Councillor Harold Asher was the first black Canadian to be elected to London City Council and has been one of our strongest champions of inclusion and workplace diversity. Mojde Cox has worked tirelessly to create a more just and equitable society through her advocacy with the labour movement and her involvement in local efforts to end carding. And finally, Councillor Mohamed Sali has mobilized the community around refugee <coughs> inclusion interfaith collaboration and a ban on, on carding. A winner of the 2015 Black Canadian National Leadership Award, he is the first Sudanese politician to be elected outside of Sudan. It was my great honour to nominate Mo, and I am thrilled that he was selected as one of the four award recipients. The outstanding commitment of leaders like these is supporting London's efforts to challenge racism and Islamophobia and create a community where everyone feels safe, welcome and able to participate fully. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you for the member statements. The member from Mississauga Streetsville. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, in March, Sheridan College in Mississauga opened the new Hazel McCallion campus. The new facility extends post secondary education to an additional 3,200 Ontario students, the majority in Mississauga and Brampton. The new 220,000-square-foot building features 29 state-of-the-art classrooms, 28 studios, labs and production spaces where the students will experience hands-on learning. Its design is sustainable, energy-efficient, and is built to state-of-the-art LEED silver standards. I join Ministers Deb Matthews, Charles Souza, and Deepika Demerla, as well as MPP Amrit Mangat, whose hard work on behalf of Sheridan College was publicly acknowledged. Mississauga Mayor Bonnie Crombie and other dignitaries were also there to officially open the new Mississauga facility. Ontario's investment in the Sheridan College expansion of the Hazel McCallion campus in Mississauga is some $67.7 million. It completes the second phase of Sheridan College. That increases the number of full-time Sheridan students in Mississauga to a total of 5,600. Since 2013, Ontario has invested more than $785 million in capital funding at Ontario's colleges and universities. 
Sheridan's global reputation as a center of excellence in digital effects and other programs can continue to attract the world's best minds to live and study in Mississauga. Thank you. Thank you. For the member's statements, the member from Perth, Wellington. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Corbin Smith is a student at Listowel District Secondary School. He is also a first-class athlete in the sport of sledge hockey. Sledge hockey is the Paralympic version of ice hockey. Players are strapped to a two-bladed sledge and move along the ice using a stick, with spikes on one end and a curved blade for shooting on the other. It's an amazing sport. Corbin has proved himself a tremendous Paralympic athlete. In fact, he recently competed with the Canadian men's sledge hockey team at the World Tournament in Torino, Italy. It was no accident that Corbin's team won the gold medal over Norway, outscoring their opposition 29-2 to in their five wins. His, team's, uh, his teammates surely appreciate Corbin's positive and humble attitude. Here's how Corbin recently described his experience. Definitely amazing and one of the best opportunities in my life. Got to take advantage of every moment I, uh, that I get. For me, it's, it's just going out there every game and playing my hardest and doing the best I can. We congratulate Corbett and his teammates. We will all be cheering for Canada's national sledge team as they compete in the upcoming 2018 Winter Olympic and Paralympic Games in so South Korea. Thanks, Speaker. Thank you. Further members' statements? The member from St. Catharines. Has the, two, has the 2021 Canada Summer Games Evaluation Committee considered bids for the uh, this athletic competition. The Niagara proposal is strong and compelling. As a community that has hosted, among other events, the 1970 and 1999 World Rowing Championships, the 2016 IIHF Under-18 Women's World Hockey Championship, key water events for the Pan Am Games in 2015, the 2017 Canadian Women's Curling Championship, and the annual Royal Henley Royal Canadian Henley Regatta, Niagara has an excellent record of success in planning and operating major athletic competitions could be counted upon to do so for the 2021 Games. With Brock University, Niagara College, the Meridian Centre, the Welland Sport Complex, the Henley Rowing Course, the Niagara Flatwater Centre and the Great Lakes all available as sites, and with significant Francophone community in Niagara, many unique tourist attractions in close proximity to the U.S. border. Our bid, supported unanimously by all communities in Niagara, is solid and merits, in my view, approval. The Regional Municipality of Niagara has committed $10 million, and the business community has expressed strong support for both the bid and for the operation of the Games. I'm confident that Niagara would do a superb job in hosting the 2021 Canada Summer Games, and I commend Doug Hamilton, Bram Cotton and Matt Hill of the Niagara Sport Commission on reaching out and building a coalition and demonstrating outstanding leadership in the Niagara bid. Thank you. For your member statements, the member from Huron Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. As with warm days and cool nights, I also want to talk about a sweet thing that's happening in my riding, and that is the sap flowing around the Belmore area and soon people will be flowing to that hamlet with a heart for the 50th anniversary of the annual Maple Syrup Festival in that community. It's held this year on April 6th and Saturday, April 8th in Belmore, and the festival has planted its roots deep and grown over the years to, a, to the great event that it is today. In 1968, the local community centre was in need of a new roof, and it was suggested that a Maple Syrup Festival could be held to raise funds for this project. And that year, more than 1,800 people came out to tap trees and produce a whopping 725 gallons of maple syrup, and my grandfather was involved in that initiative. And by the end of the year, Speaker, guess what? The community centre had a brand new roof. But as a side note, I think it's a, it's a heartache to share that the January hydro bill for this very community centre had a global adjustment line item of almost $6,000 oh. for oh. one month. And they're going to have to do more fundraising just to make sure they cover the cost of their bills to keep that building going. But I want to end on a good note. It's the 50th anniversary of the Belmore Maple Syrup Festival this year. Please make the drive to Belmore. You won't be disappointed. It'll be a sweet treat for everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank all members for their statements.